If you own and use an APS-C camera, your priorities probably include portability and affordability. So what does that look like when you want a great astrophotography lens at this form factor? Well, there are some interesting options in the autofocus category, but if you're willing to go fully manual, you can cut the cost in half. For quite some time, the only wide-angle, wide-aperture APS-C option under $300 was the Rokinon 12mm f2, a lens I have owned and traveled with for years. But not too long ago, a new contender hit the scene to compete directly for this spot, the TT Artisan 10mm f2. By the numbers, we're getting the same maximum aperture at a wider field of view, and at the time of publishing, at a cost savings of $50 in an already very budget-friendly category. Now, TT Artisan sent this lens to me just so that I would review it, but in order for it to become my new go-to starry landscape lens, we have to ask, how does it actually measure up in the field? We're about to find out in this APS-C budget-friendly Astro Lens shootout. Each of these lenses is offered in a variety of mounts, but we'll be using the Sony E-mount versions, and your results on other brands may vary slightly. Right out of the box, you can tell that TT Artisan is proud of their lenses. I have to admit that this designer box is a nice touch, but it will take more than cozy packaging to sway veteran photographers. Side by side, the TT Artisan lens is slightly taller and noticeably heavier with a near all-metal construction but that added weight is not going to be a serious negative at this size. In fact, I really like how sleek the lens looks and feels. Though to be honest, the choice of this Lucida handwritten typeface makes the designer in me cringe a little bit. They could have done better for their branding, but obviously not a deal breaker, especially at this price point. Each of the lenses has a flared out filter mount with the TT Artisan lens taking slightly larger filters. A lot of ultra wide lenses don't accept filters, so this is a nice feature on both. It's also well worth mentioning that the metal lens cap of the TT Artisan actually screws on. I know that some users hate that build choice, but I absolutely love it. I can't tell you how many times the cap on the Rokinon lens was found just floating around in my camera pack. For me, the certainty represents a huge quality of life improvement. But one thing the Rokinon has that the other doesn't is a proper lens hood to combat glare. While I do primarily use these lenses at night, this would come in handy for daylight landscapes and street photography. And while we're on the topic of daylight, let me show you how these two lenses differ when it comes to what some photographers call sun stars. If you're going for that look, the aperture blades on the TT Artisan lens give it to you a lot sooner, with significant spiking at just f4. To get the same level on the Rokinon, you have to stop down to f8, and the flares still don't look as clean or sharp as the TT Artisan. That being said, if we're talking about aperture, the Rokinon lens can stop down to f22, a significant light control advantage over the f16 minimum on the TT Artisan. Now you will obviously expect a difference in the field of view between a 10 and 12 millimeter lens, but check out how well the TT Artisan handles field distortion at the wider view. Very impressive for how well it holds these straight lines. The Rokinon isn't doing too bad, but even at the narrower field, not quite as good. Some of this can be compensated for in post with lens corrections in Adobe software, but that brings up another important point. At the moment, TT Artisan does not have any built-in lens profiles within Photoshop or Lightroom. This means that for aspects like vignette correction, you're going to have some limitations, especially in dark scenes. And I suppose that takes us right into the main reason we're here, the Milky Way tests. These shots were captured on the Sony a6500, and as always, we're showing you the raw, unedited images. We maxed out the aperture at f2, with an exposure time of 15 seconds and an ISO value of 3200, white balance set to 4600K. The histogram will necessarily say different, strictly because of the variance of the field of view, but I have to say I'm not seeing any significant difference in light capture at the maximum aperture. Let's get a closer look. At the center, I think both are pulling a really nice amount of detail and contrast from the nebula. I'm not seeing any difference in sharpness whatsoever, though with the narrower field of view of the 12mm lens, you are technically getting a little more detail, and a narrower view may very well be your preference for a shot of this type. Let's see if that amounts to an advantage for the foreground. I've raised the exposure's two stops to give us a better look. To my surprise, it would appear that the wider 10mm lens is giving us better detail here. The edge fidelity on the mountains, the fence posts, and this foreground structure are noticeably sharper, while we could also say that there is less color noise in the grass. Now, you might be able to say that the road and foliage are slightly better on the tighter 12mm view, but it's not conclusive. So let's have a look at a second example. Same settings, same raised exposure. Once again, the TT Artisan is noticeably sharper, and what's more, you can definitely see in this image how much more color noise you get on the Rokinon. Though in the corners, it does appear to have less dark vignetting, albeit still much noisier. 
If we remove the exposure enhancements and go out to the corners of the star field, you'll notice something that might surprise you though. Wow, the TT Artisan lens is way sharper at the edges, which is also resulting in a far greater number of stars captured. There appears to be slightly more chromatic aberration out here on the Rokinon as well, and what seems to be some astigmatism. Now you could say that a change in aperture will compensate for these corner issues, but that would defeat the purpose. In these low light tests at f2, we seem to have a clear winner. The only question that remains is whether the field of view makes a difference for star streaks. At 15 seconds, they both look fine. At 20 seconds, you might be getting away with it slightly more on the 10 millimeter lens, but by 25 seconds, you can definitely see streaking on both, though I will say it is more pronounced on the 12 millimeter lens. So I guess we could call this last test another advantage for the 10 millimeter TT Artisan lens. As I genuinely consider the potential of this newer lens as my preferred APS-C Astro lens, I took it with me everywhere. And I will say that while I prefer an intermediate field of view for time lapses, having the 10 millimeter lens gave me an opportunity for shots like this, where I could really get in close to a spectacular foreground subject while maintaining framing of the Milky Way. I wasn't expecting to like this lens as much as I did. It is in fact the most inexpensive ultra wide angle, wide aperture lens you can get for your Sony APS-C camera right now, and demonstrably sharper than the one I already own. So if you'd like to own one as well, check out the link in the video description. But a question for you guys, which APS-C cameras do you think are overlooked for low light photography? Let me know in the comments so that I can plan some tests. If you liked this video, you'll probably enjoy my review of Sony's current APS-C flagship. I've been shooting APS-C for a long time, so feel free to hit me with questions as well. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.